Welcome to the California State Controllers tutorial on how to navigate the Universal Holder Face Sheet, also known as the UFS-1 form. California law requires holders to review their records each year to determine if they have any unclaimed property. If the property has remained unclaimed for the required dormancy period based on the last activity date, then it must be reported to the State Controller's Office. California has a two-step reporting process. The Universal Holder Face Sheet, or UFS-1, is used in both steps. You can obtain a copy of the UFS-1 form from the Controller's Reporting Resources webpage at www.sco dot ca dot gov slash upd underscore rptg dot html once you find the link click on it to open the form now let's get started near the top of the page make sure to check the appropriate box the Holder Notice Report is the first step in the two-step process. Keep in mind the report is due annually. Select Due Before November 1st unless you are submitting for a life insurance company, which is due before May 1st. Please note, do not remit or deliver property with the Holder Notice Report. Property remitted with the Holder Notice Report will be returned to the holder. The due date of the remittance will be provided on the Holder Remit Report Reminder Letter or 14F form, which will be issued once the Holder Notice Report is approved. Select the Supplemental Notice Report box if additional reportable properties are identified after the Holder Notice Report has been submitted. You will receive a separate Holder Remit Report Reminder Letter, 14F, for any supplemental notice report filed. The Holder Remit Report is the second step in the two-step process. The Holder Remit Report is due annually between June 1st and June 15th, or, for life insurance companies, between December 1st and December 15th. All property must be remitted with the Holder Remit Report unless the property owner account was reactivated or the property was already returned to the owner. When completing a Holder Remit Report, you must enter the report ID number in the box at the top right corner of the form. The report ID number is provided in the Holder Remit Report Reminder Letter 14F. Now that you have selected the appropriate report type, Let's walk through the rest of the UFS-1. Please note, missing or incomplete information on the required sections of the UFS-1 may cause a delay in processing. In Section A, which is required, enter the holder's information. The holder is the business reporting the unclaimed property. Enter the holder's FEIN or Federal Employer Identification Number which is also known as the tax ID number. Then, if applicable, enter the corresponding branch number. Next, enter the report as of date. The as of date is the cutoff date of the reporting cycle. The as of date determines which properties will be reported in the holder notice and remit report. The as of date is not the signature date or report due date. The as of date must be either June 30th or the date of the holder's fiscal year end. The most commonly used as of dates are June 30th and December 31st. For life insurance companies, December 31st will always be the as of date. When submitting a holder remit report, enter the check number or electronic funds transfer reference number. Section B is for holder contact information. Completion of this section is also required. Enter the holder name and address. 
enter the contact information for the person in the business responsible for completing the report. The state controller staff will use this information to contact the holder with questions about the report. The information in this section must match the holder contact information in the electronic report. For section C, which is also a required section, enter the property owner contact information for the person responsible for handling inquiries from owners attempting to claim their property prior to remittance. Please note, the contact information provided in this section will appear on the state controller's website. This information will also be printed on SCO notices to property owners. The notices will instruct owners to contact your business to inquire about their property by a certain date. Complete Section D only if you are a reporting agent who is filing the report. Enter the reporting agent's name and contact information. The state controller staff will use this information to contact the agent with any questions about the report. For Section E, enter the contact information for the holder's chief executive officer or chief financial officer. The state controller staff will contact this person if the individual listed in Section B cannot be contacted. Completion of Section E is required. If the business does not have a CEO or CFO, enter the contact information for the business's president or owner. Section F is required and must be completed. If this is a holder notice report, enter the total dollar amount and or share amount reported. If this is a holder remit report, enter the total dollar amount and or share amount remitted. Check yes or no to indicate whether the report includes safe deposit box contents. Please note, the amount entered in this section must equal the dollar amount and or share amount on the property owner list. The property owner list can be compiled electronically or on paper. Paper reporting is acceptable only for holders reporting less than 10 properties. Electronic format must be used for 10 or more properties. In Section G, first enter the organization type incorporation state, and date of incorporation. Next, enter the North American Industry Classification System Code, also known as a NAICS code. NAICS codes can be found at www.naics.com. Now, enter your charter number, type, federal or state, and charter date. Section H is only used by insurance companies. If this report is for an insurance company and the report includes proceeds from a demutualization, check the box in the upper center of Section H. Enter the date of demutualization and check the box next to the appropriate Code of Civil Procedure section. Complete Section I only if you are using a transfer agent for security related properties. Enter the name and address of the transfer agent. The last part of the UFS-1 is Section J. The section must be completed. Print your name and sign in either blue or black ink. Indicate your title within the business and date the form. Please note, the California State Controller's Office requires an original signature on all UFS-1 forms except for a reporting agent submitting multiple reports. If you are a reporting agent, refer to the holder handbook for detailed instructions about a transmittal letter for multiple reports. We have now reviewed all sections of the UFS-1. Remember, missing or incomplete information on the required sections of the UFS-1 may cause a delay in the processing of your report. Be sure to print out a copy of your complete UFS-1 and keep it for your records. Please refer to the holder handbook to learn about additional requirements for completing reports. Visit the controller's website at www.sco.ca.gov 
and type Holder Handbook in the search box at the top of the screen. For more information or for additional questions, contact the State Controller's Unclaimed Property Holder Outreach and Compliance Unit at 916-464-6088 or UPD Holder Outreach at sco.ca.gov.